Hello ladies and gents, I hope you're doing well and welcome back to another video. I'm finally back home in the studio here in Bali after what was, to be quite honest, an incredible two weeks in Oman. That country totally surpassed all my expectations and I cannot wait to return. Having said that, I'm equally excited to be here because I desperately need to catch up on sleep. You might not be able to tell by the quality of this video because I'm recording on an Osmo, but I am extremely tired. Anyway, a couple of weeks ago, I released a video detailing my editing process on Lightroom, and I noticed in the comment section that a couple of you were interested in learning a bit more about my process in Photoshop. Now, I know Photoshop can be a little bit daunting, or it may appear a little daunting if you haven't used it before. I can promise you now, my process is actually very, very simple, and I think that you're gonna learn a thing or two in this video, so stick around. And I think with that said, let's jump right into it. All right, so here you will see one of my favorite pictures from 2023, and that is one from Kalinking Beach in Noosa, Pernida. Now, I'm pretty happy with the color grade already. I achieved that in uh, Lightroom, but there are a few things that I wanna clean up. And before I jump up, jump up, jump in to this cleaning process, uh, I like to have a look at the whole image as I do in Lightroom and consider uh, what it is that I wanna change. So you'll see on the left-hand side here, we've got I think three trails of footprints that I find a little distracting. One here, one there, and one kind of leading towards the subject. I don't remember her running back and forth maybe for a picture that someone was taking down on the beach, uh, but I'm gonna get rid of all of those. I'm not keen on this lighter orange patch of sand. I feel like it distracts from a, what could be a consistent tone of orange through that part of the frame, which I think would look a lot cleaner. So I'm gonna change that. And we've also got this boulder on the beach, which as you can imagine, I find a little bit distracting. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Following that, I'm gonna take a look at the shadows in the waves. I think I'm gonna darken them slightly. And then if I zoom in right here, you'll notice these, I don't know, little areas of spray, this kind of milky color around some of the waves, one being here and one there. And I'm gonna get rid of those. I mean, they're hardly distracting to the, to the naked eye, uh, especially if you're looking at this work on Instagram, but I don't like to think of editing my work for Instagram, I'm editing my work for me. And Instagram is just a place that I post it, and so I wanna make sure that I give my images my all. And all the ten, you know, when I think about it, all the time that it took me to take them, I might as well spend time editing them properly. So if I hit Command and Zero to zoom out, good little shortcut for you, and I will mention some other shortcuts throughout this video. So we zoom out, what I'm gonna do is select the Spot Healing Brush tool, and this is the first tool that we're gonna use. Now, if we open up this menu here, you'll see that I've got the hardness on 20%, spacing at 25. I honestly don't even know what spacing is, but I just set the hardness to 20 because I like to have a soft edge on any of these adjustments that I'm gonna make. If I have it too hard, well, then we're gonna get some seriously like sharp lines around the adjustments and that's not gonna look very good. Uh, one thing I will do, if I zoom back out once more, I'm just gonna hit Command and J and that's gonna duplicate the layer so if I make any mistakes and I need to go back to my original layer, I can simply use a layer mask and brush back to it. But I do not intend on making any mistakes in this video. So zooming in with that spot healing brush tool, I'm gonna slowly just move over these footprints. One there, two there, and you know, doing this quickly, this should only take a matter of you know, 30, 40 seconds to be quite honest. So that's that trail done, now we need to work on these. And you'll see actually the spot hand brush does a pretty fantastic job of, of cleaning this up. Uh, nice and simple. Blends it very well with the rest of the image. And just like that, we are almost done. Okay, that's those footprints taken care of. I think this little footprint here it's gonna be a bit of a challenge for the Spot Healing Brush tool. Uh, I mean, I could try changing from Content and Aware to Create Texture, um, but that didn't really do a very good job. So what I am gonna do is head over to this menu. No, I'm not. I'm gonna to head to this menu and select the Clone Stamp tool. Now, I wanna make sure my flow is, I'm gonna say down to around 30%, and our hardness is at 30, which is great. And here, I'm gonna simply hit Option to select an area that I wanna copy and I'm gonna paste it in here. And I'll be tapping multiple times because my flow is at 30%. It's not like a 100% carbon copy of that. I'm just 
pacing it in bit by bit, slowly, slowly, until it nicely matches that part of the frame. Okay, so that's that done with the spot healing brush tool. If I hit Command and A to zoom out, Command and zero, sorry, and double tap these, you'll see that the footprints are no longer. So we've had a look at the spot healing brush tool. We have also covered the clone step. Let's go back to this menu and select the patch tool. Now we don't need to use the patch tool for this, but sometimes I'll just select the patch tool to make a selection. You can also use, you know, the lasso tool or the polygon and lasso tool. Um, but we will use the patch tool just to make the selection. So what I'm gonna do is make a selection around the sand like so. Okay, done that. Now we wanna head to edit. I'm gonna go content aware fill, not generative fill, because I find when I do generative fill over larger portions of the image, the quality of that AI fill isn't great. It looks very low resolution, and I find it only to be useful for very small parts of the image, as you'll see a little bit later when I remove the spray from the waves. Okay, so that's that selection done. Uh, seems pretty good in the preview. We can hit okay. And if we hit Command and D to deselect that area, you can see it is actually done a pretty decent job. Not bad at all. I think what I will do is go back to the clean stamp tool, or you can simply hit S if you want to access that. And I'm going to copy parts of this sand onto here. I think I'll go for a flow of 20%. Let's hold Option and select this. Oh, actually, that's not going to work. We need to join these layers up. So I can hit Command, click on layer one, and Command and E to join them. And for OCD's sake, I will just change that back to layer one instead of layer one copy. So Option, click. And I'm going to just slowly clean stamp parts of this sand uh, with this area here. And I think that's looking a lot better. Hit Command and O to zoom out. And if I show you the before and after now, you see that the left-hand side of that frame is looking a hell of a lot cleaner if I don't say my so. Don't say my so. My God, I am tired. If I don't say so myself. Okay, left-hand side of the image is now clean. It is time to take care of this evil rock. And for that, we will go back to the patch tool and give this a little go. So again, making a little selection around the area of the rock, and I'm also including the trail that comes off the rock as well. You know, I can't just remove the rock without removing the trail, otherwise it wouldn't make sense. You look at the trail and think, well, why the hell is that there? So, use the patch, using the patch tool, we've made a selection. Let's have a look at an area that might suit uh, this part of the image. I'm gonna say roughly something like that could work. It seems that the waves are not being ruined. It seems the sand matches relatively well near the top. And I think if we let go and hit Command and D, you can see it's done a pretty decent job. Yeah, pretty good. I think again, we could hit S for clean stamp. And you'll notice here that oftentimes it involves using a couple of tools to get the job done. Uh, which is absolutely fine. Okay, select this, like that. And that seems pretty good to me. Now just to clean sand a little bit of that sand there to almost feather it nicely. And if we zoom out, come on to know, before, after, before and after. The rock is gone, the sand has been cleaned up, things are looking very good. Okay, what did I mention would be next? Ah yes, dodging and burning. So we head over to this lollipop looking icon and we go to the burn tool. Now, I've already got my range set to shadows. I'm gonna set the exposure to around 10%. You know, we can see how this looks. And the hardness, yeah, I mean, I'll go to 10%, sure, why not? I've put the exposure to the 10 because, you know, it can be very harsh if I set it a lot higher. Let's say I set it to 100 and try to darken these waves. It's almost pitch black, it does not look good. So let's set that back to 10. And then slowly, you know, just brush into some shadows into these waves. And also the shadows of the wave on the beach. Let's see. Yep, looks pretty good. Just a couple of simple clicks and I've introduced quite a bit of contrast into that part of the image. Now, I have dodged or burned. I can't remember which one is which still. Um, but, aha, are we burned. So we're gonna choose the dodge tool and I'm actually gonna boost the midtones in some of the areas uh, where the waves are kind of cresting. I think that's the right term. 
Uh, I just want to brighten these areas a little bit. So if we zoom in, midtones at exposure 20%, that should be fine. And you'll notice that just brightening the beginnings of the waves. I think that also looks pretty nice. So before and after, before and after, added contrast to the mid-ground, clean up the left side, fantastic. Uh, next steps and final steps really with cleaning up this image is simply gonna be these parts of the waves. And for this, I am going to use AI Fill. Uh, now, if you have had any experience with AI Fill, you know that it has its good days and it has its bad days. Sometimes it's an absolute pleasure and a time saver and quite frankly, a wonderful thing. Other times, not so much. Um, so we can select the patch tool or, you know, maybe to mix things up, we'll select the lasso tool to make our selection. And what you wanna do here is, or what I wanna do here, is make a selection around this part of the wave, then holding shift, and you'll see that plus sign appearing uh, by the lasso, we're gonna select this area too. This just saves us a little time and enables us to do two generative fills at once. Instead of having to do one generative fill, wait 20 minutes for it to load, and then do another one and wait 20 minutes for load, we can do them both at once. So we've made our selections, we can hit generative fill and hit generate. And now we wait 20 minutes for this to process. Okay, so let's have a look at the variations it's made for us. One, two, one, two. I'm not sure which is better. I'm, I'm leaning towards the second variation. I'm pretty sure there's another variation. Yeah, let's check the third one. No, I'm gonna go for the second one. Second one looks great. And then we can hit Command and O to zoom out just a little bit more. Now, I'm gonna join up these layers again. Command and click both of them, Command and E. And now it's called Generative Fill, and to be honest, I can't be bothered to change it back to layer one, so I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, but that's done. We've cleaned up the image pretty well. I think next step would be to sharpen this. Now, I may have mentioned on my Instagram before that I use a mixture of tools to do this. I might use you know, Lightroom sometimes to sharpen an image. I might use Photoshop, I might use Topaz Denoise, I might use Topaz Sharpen. There's so many other tools out there as well. Um, but to be honest, I'm pretty happy with the way I sharpen things in Photoshop mostly these days. So to do that, take a little look. All I do is Command and J on Generative Fill to duplicate that layer. I'm gonna type it like USM, and USM stands for Unsharp Mask. Now, if I zoom in, you'll be able to see that the difference this makes. I mean, it's already a very sharp image, but I like crispy images, so I'm gonna do this. What we do is head over to Filter, Sharpen, and Unsharp Mask. I have the amount at 100, the radius set to one pixel, and I hit OK, and it's that simple. Now if I zoom in and hide this layer, and then unhide it, you see that the details of the image really start to pop. And I quite like that. And in my experience, you know, while you might not be able to tell necessarily on Instagram, if you upload it to Twitter in high resolution or you print the images, it often has a really, really nice effect. Uh, obviously that's my style. Some people like soft images and I guess that's also okay too. Anyway, we've sharpened the image, nice and simple. And last but not least, Last but not least, oh my God. Last but not least, I am gonna put a little autumn glow on this image. So we've got our USM layer, our unsharp mask. We're just gonna hit Command and J. Rename this autumn effect. Nice, spell it correctly. And let's then head up to the filter, blur and Gaussian blur. I've got the radius set to 35 pixels. I heard in a video many years ago that maybe you want to set the radius to a value that's similar to the megapixels in your camera. Uh, my camera is a 45 megapixel camera and I found that I prefer 35. So experiment with it and see what works for you. Anyway, radius set to 35, we hit okay. Then we're gonna open up adjustments layer. We're gonna bring up a levels layer and we're gonna connect this, connect, I don't really know if that's the right word, click this to the Orton Effect layer. As you can see, we've got this arrow heading down and that means it's clipped to the Orton Effect layer. Now I'm gonna bring the wides, highlights down to around 210. And if you look at this wave area here, I'm bringing this down until it's almost burning white. There you go, pretty much burning white. And then I'm gonna bring the mid tones up 
until I've got a near black color in the water, as you can see there. Then you want to select your auto effect layer and slide the opacity all the way down to zero. And trust me, if you bring this up to like 20%, you'll notice that's already pretty blurry and too blurry for me. I'm probably going to leave that at 5%, a very, very minimal touch, as you'll see there. You might not even be able to see on YouTube. I actually have no idea. Um, very little blurry layer. And with that, that is basically my entire Photoshop process for 99% of my images. Actually, 100%. I can't think of another tool I actually use. And if I do end up using another tool, I'll probably make another video about it. Anyway, guys, this was a quick one. I hope you found this useful. And if you haven't already given Photoshop a try, I hope this encourages you to do so. If you like this video, feel free to uh, subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.